Hi, um, I, um, I want to do one last, one last little video about logicism, and this is not about Frega or Russell, but it's a little discussion about Carnap. Rudolf, Rudolf Carnap, he, um, was a part of the trend of logical positivism in the early, in the early, tw in the early 20th century analytic thought. And he wrote Elimination of Metaphysics through um, Linguistic Analysis, I think, um, through, through, the, through the analysis of language. He also wrote Empiricism, Semantics, and Ontology. And he is probably the last part of um, Lotusism, except for the parts of except for the parts of Lotus and which you'll find in the form the formalist trend. Um, but going back to going back to um Gala Frege. Frege was an uh, was a realist in in ontology and truth value. Uh, he believed that, you know, via the via logical objects there's there's mathematical objects objects there. And then Russell um Gain to believe that in his later, you know, works, he stated that the, the logical objects, the logical objects are merely um, expressions, which you know are that show you know existence of that, that show ex existence of numbers, but there's but there's no real um, or that they're ma they're manifest they're they're ma manifest manifestations of our of our, of our you know that they're that it's it's a uh, idealist standpoint, I guess, but it's with the the, the logicist tradition. And then Carnap, this is the last one that I'm gonna do out of this book. Um, Carnap, and I'm mostly referring to empiricism, empiricism, semantics, and ontology here, because in that in that writing he discusses a few different of his linguistic frameworks. Uh, Carnap was famous for his li for his linguistic frameworks because um, he he hated meta metaphysics so much because he stated that they were uh, asking pseudo questions. Um, for instance, <laughs> the 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 question in philosophy of, of mathematics, which is you know common since way before him, since you know Pla Plato started it with his uh, Platonism, and that's where that's where philosophy of mathematics was born, and uh, ever since Plato, you know, the question has been, do numbers exist? Do this kind of numbers exist? Do cardinal numbers exist? Do um, these things ex exist or what? And, you know, there's many, many different responses on that. And this is in the Lotus's tradition, it is, but it's very interesting because of the fact that he labels these he labels the question "Do numbers do, do numbers exist?" as metaphysical pseudo questions. Now, in the writing, elimination of, of metaphysics via the the analysis of language, that is when he first, you know, did his big big discussions against against met metaphysics and argued against metaphysical questions and method, and that was that was that that that, that was big, and then. Um, you know, lots, lots, lots of stuff happened between that, that article, and empiricism, semantics, and ontology, and the frameworks kind of um, uh, changed a little bit. But, but by the way, um, I could, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I am going into uh, in depth, in depth discussions of Carnap's uh, articles. But this is about philosophy of, of mathematics, and I, I'm doing that in the in the. I'm starting a new group, a new group of videos with a new anthology book um, on contemporary analytic epistemology, and it's it's going to start with uh, G.E. Moore, Bertrand Russell, and. Uh, the, as well as the logical positivism via, via the circle type, type of thing, and as well as 
I'll be going over the uh, Carnap two two the two Carnap articles Carnap uh, empiricism empiricism semantics and ontology as well as the elimination of, of metaphysics. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm going to go over those in, in depth. But here I just want to discuss the linguistic frameworks and the fact how he's discussing this I, this idea uh, this idea this question of do numbers exist as a metaphysical pseudo question and that it should be asked in a, in, in a different way if there's going to be any real question to it um, and questions like um, it, is there any prime number greater than a hundred or a hundred that exists um, Carnap says that these need to be these you know pseudo questions like do numbers exist and stuff need to be analyzed by biological analysis based on based on rules for the new the new expression. So uh, and also not by empirical investigation based on observation. So this is where you know he has a framework a, a linguistic framework called the system of, of numbers, and that. Is uh, that is they need to be uh, no, questions like that need to be formulated as to fit into there because stuff like that isn't gonna it, you can't really get an answer like that with those with those questions so Carnap says and uh, questions like this are gonna be answered by um, Oh, he also says that existence it, the existence of numbers is, 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 is that will be a trivial trivial quant consequence um, of uh, the rule and definition of the, of the framework. So that's that's that, that, that's what I was what I was looking for. Essentially, questions like that are going to come from questions formulated for the for the framework that they go in. So there's a lot there's a lot, lot there's lots of lot, lots of frameworks and they're you know discussed in earlier earlier articles by him as well as you know those and there's there's four, there's frameworks that are um, carved out which are where questions are, are supposed to go and existence of numbers and stuff like that are um, posterior questions that are gonna possibly be possibly be answered you know given the how the fr how the framework is gonna answer it so the big the big deal here is this is logicism, but it's um, looking at numbers and structures of numbers and all that stuff based upon um, the, the the linguistic expressions that are that are there. Like in the in the statement, do numbers do are the do do prime numbers greater than one hundred exist? That's um, that can be bro can be broken down into a, into a, into a framework based upon linguistic expressions there, and, you know that, and that you know they logical objects exist, but they're based upon linguistic expression. They are essentially linguistic linguistic expressions. Now the the, the big question here is, I want to look at you know the three kinds of logisms that have been that I have discussed like the realist one of Frege versus the idealist one of Russell well Russell wasn't always a uh, idealist in, in his um, in his later work in, in, introduction to math, mathematical philosophy philosophy of things you know, called it, it's, it's in that one where he you know states uh, idealist position but in the prince in the principia mathematica with Alfred North, Alfred North Whitehead, he um, didn't have this idealist, uh, this, this idealist, idealist position. But I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look at him as an as a idealist at, at, at the moment, with, with respect to um, ontology at least. 
And then looking looking at Carnap with this logicism, which is um, it's not realist, but it's more like it's more like um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to how to describe it, whether it's um, idealism, idealist logicism. Based on linguistic, you know, uh, or 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 is it ling or is it linguistic nihilism? But it's but it's mostly linguistic logicism, where it is definitely not realist in either truth in really either truth value or uh, ontology. So I want to I want to I want to think think about those, and I think about whether which one which one will be will be better um, if one were to. You know, if one were to like reconstruct a certain logicist um, idea of numbers, and I, I guess the the thing I want to think about is logical objects, like in um, Crispin Crispin writes um, writing the philosophical significance of Frege's theorem. He dis he discusses lots of things that 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 Frege said, such as how certain mathematical expressions can be can be broken down into Second order uh, logical e expressions, and thus lo logical objects con 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 connected together by connective connectives, which are logical objects. And um, I want to think about those now. Let's say um, the conditional or the biconditional or the uh, universal quantifier or the, ex the existential quantifier. Are those um, are those things? Can they be reduced to linguistic linguistic expressions? And I would say that, with respect to you know the other two of uh, Frege and Russell, I would say that it's a better thing to contend that uh, they are linguistic expressions, what logical objects are, rather than being you know uh, an idealist about it, or um, realist, because I think Carnap. You know, I, I mean, I've read you know his stuff, and I think he, I think he presents a really good, a really good point that um, it's that it's based upon the the, the linguistic framework what the answer to, to certain questions are, are going to be, or if the answer is a pseudo question, and we're not going to be we're not going to be able to answer it forthright at all. But yeah, I think that if there's any, if there's going to be any Logicism, then it would have to be um, linguistic. It had to be linguistic, um, saying that saying that the the logical objects that you break down, if, if you if you take a, a mathematical expression and break it down to a logical a logical expression with logical objects, that those things, those, those logical objects, those logical objects are are made up out of a are made up from linguistic exp expressions. And the whole thing is a linguistic expression. That I think would be most most plausible for any for any logicist theory.